This is the function that's provided. They say that the domain of this function is all real values of x. Is that correct? And then the question is, what's the value of k? Yeah. OK. So I just want you to guys to look at this for a moment and, and think through it with me. You've got a function. I know normally you might think of, oh, there's a square root. right? There's a square root. So therefore, um, that means that I've only got positive values. right? I've only got positive values. That's true if you are thinking about the range. If you're thinking about the range. The square root of anything is defined as the positive value. If you want the negative square root, then you've got to slap a negative sign behind it. Okay? So the range of this thing is uh, f of x has to be greater than or equal to 0. But that is a question about range, not about domain. Okay? Domain is about what values of x can I put in there. Okay? Now, quite clearly, oh, that's embarrassing, man. Come on. <laughs> Just because you're not as, yeah, that's fine. Quite clearly, there are functions involving a square root, like that guy, where you can put in any value of x that you like. Um, the square root of x squared, that's actually something else you've heard of before. What is that? That's the absolute value of x, right? And um, that exists for all values of x. The domain is, is the same. Okay? So what does it mean for this? The reason why this exists for all real values of x is because no matter what you put into x, you always end up with a positive or zero underneath the square root. Do you agree with that? You can put negative numbers in there, positive numbers, you're fine. Okay? But if I change this around a little bit, let's use this space over here. Let's try something like this. Okay? What is the domain of this? I need to make sure that everything underneath the square root is greater than or equal to 0. So this, if I solve this, that will give me the domain of this function here. Um, as it happens, let's see, that's x squared minus 1. So roughly, it looks like this. Um, so that's 1, that's negative 1. Okay. So which points am I interested in? Um, x is less than or equal to negative 1 is OK. That's all right, that's above or x is greater than or equal to positive 1. That's also OK. Right? So in a case like this, you can see the domain isn't everything. It's only some things. Okay? Let me give you one more example. Square root of x squared plus 1. Plus 1 instead of minus 1. What's the domain now? The domain of this one is all real x, just like this one, because, think about it. Think about what's underneath the square root. Think about x squared plus 1. When is this graph greater than or equal to 0? And if you think about it, like I deliberately chose this because it's an easy graph. When you think about the graph, it's always greater than or equal to 0. Every value of x, they're all fine. These guys are all fine. Okay? Now, convert that over to what this question is about. We're trying to work out, hey, when is this thing always above? Always above the x-axis, always positive. Bit awkward keeping on saying like always this, always that. If only I had some kind of language that described a quadratic function like this that was definitely positive, no wonder what no matter what kind of value I put in. Oh wait, we do have language for that. We're looking for this. The reason why this works all the time, as opposed to this guy, is that this one is indefinite. Yeah? Some values are positive, some values are negative. Whereas this one is, what's it called again? It's definite, it's not just definite, it's, it's positive definite. Okay. Um, it's important that you say it's positive definite because if you have a negative definite function, for example, uh, something like this, see this guy? What's this guy? It's that function, right? What's the domain of this function? There's, there's not a single value of x you can put in there. It, it never works, right? You put any x value in there, you'll always get something negative underneath the square root. So this, this guy's not a very interesting thing to draw. So what I'm trying to do now, therefore, is if I want positive definite, I know it works for this. Now I'm trying to think about it for this guy. Let's think about the positive part of positive definite. What is it that makes this positive and not this one? Which value is it that tells me that? Yeah. It's the a. It's the coefficient of x squared. right? That's why for this guy, it's definite. It's, it's definite, but it's negative definite. That's no good. So what's the a in this case? 
a equals 4, so a is positive. That's the first step. If a wasn't positive, then forget about it. I don't even need to worry about this positive definite stuff. Now I need to deal with the definite part. What's the condition that a quadratic has to have for it to be definite? I want the discriminant to be negative because I don't want any roots. If the discriminant is greater or equal, uh, greater than or equal to zero, I will get a root, but I don't want that. Okay, so now you can do this. Now it's actually quite straightforward to solve. Um, you can work out your uh, b squared minus four a c. Uh, that looks like four times thirty-six, which is a hundred and forty-four. How's that looking? Is that okay? So k minus 12, k plus 12, because it's just difference of squares. So you tell me, which values work? When is this, think about what it looks like. Think about what it looks like. When is it negative? Very good, because this function here, this graph of k has negative 12, 12, and these are the good parts. These are the ones I'm interested in. So therefore, uh, negative 12, to 12. Happy? The hardest part of it really is actually working out, like it's not hard to work out the discriminant. It's knowing that you should work out the discriminant and that you want it to be negative. Make sense? Why is the discriminant small? If I want this situation here, right, where, yeah, cool, the parabola is always above. The way to know that a parabola is always above is that there are no roots. If there are roots, I'm stuffed, I've got this indefinite situation, right? But I've been told that this thing doesn't have roots. I've been told that this thing is always positive. So I, that's why I want a discriminant of negative. That will give me no roots. Okay?